photography tips, inspiration, ideas, or anything about film? Well, you've come to the right place. Born in Film and Photo Nation present Film Factor Podcast. Follow us on our social platforms at Born in Film on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. generation of visual storytellers, young and old alike, across all gender, beyond ethnicity, thriving in an online community. Built in the Philippines, for the world. From the streets of Intramuros to the ringing bells of Shalom Sirson, atop the great mountains of the Himalayas to the deeps of the Great Barrier Reef. across Asia, Europe, Oceania, Africa, and the Americas. We will tell stories. We are Photo Nation. And the passion will live on.
I should be back in school. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up. And change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank everyone and Musta uwi mo diyan anak Good evening everyone and welcome to another episode of Breaking Boundaries. We are now in our fourth episode and so far, we're doing great and fine. We are live both in Facebook and Instagram so be sure to mention your friends and share this video so we could have more interactions for tonight's episode. Tonight, Breaking Boundaries is back again with more new and interesting topics. And the key word for tonight's episode is women. We will be talking about the historic feat of Hydlin Diaz in the ongoing Tokyo 2020 Olympics as well as the latest issue in Canon Ambassadorship for not including women in their lineup for brand ambassadors. We will also discuss about the new variant of COVID-19, which plays an alarm to the full country. All these and more in Breaking Boundaries for tonight. But syempre, hindi ako mag tonight dahil sasamaan ako ng aking co-host na si Eldridge. Eldridge, andyan ka ba? Yes, nandito ako nga, Kuya Hans. And for today's episode, medyo bigate ng ating guest coming from different areas of the Philippines. So, first stop tayo sa hot topic. Mer- uh, kasama natin sila Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason. And second stop for our spotlight, nandito sina Kuya Paolo Monasterio and Bernard Joseph. So, sit back, relax, and as we start our today's episode. Breaking Boundaries is back again with more new and interesting topics. On Hot Topic. 
Philippines wins its first gold Olympic medal. We'll discuss about Heidelin Diaz, and how her win at the Olympics pushed for women empowerment. Canon is under fire for its latest brand ambassadorship. We'll discuss misogyny, and its effect to the photography community. Delta COVID-19 variant pushes NCR mayors and the IATF to reinforce ECQ in Metro Manila. On Spotlight, we'll chat with portrait photographers Bernard Joseph Meyer and Paolo Monasterio. Lastly, we'll introduce a new segment where guests react to stuff from the 90s. Don't miss all these and more on Breaking Boundaries. Yo, hard up ang ating na. ano ha, intro. So yeah, Kuya Hans, naman. start. Mm. Eh, ugnay natin pa talagalin pa. Sasamahan tayo ngayon ni Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason for hot topics na na-witness nga natin for headlines playback. Kung saan pag-uusapan natin ng historic feat ni Heidling Diaz and as well as the latest issue in canon. Ugnay natin pa talagalin pa. Tawagin natin Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason. Hello po. Hello guys, hello. Hello po. Good evening. So yun, bago tayo mag-start, no? Mag-introduce muna natin isa-isa yung, yung guest natin, no, Hans. Introduce muna natin, like, uh, say your name, uh, tagasan kayo, and also, anong ginagawa nyo for today's date, no? So start tayo kay Kuya Jason muna. Ako si Karel Jason Kaipa. Taga Dipolo po ako sa Bangga del Norte. Right now, wala pa akong masyado ginagawa except yung konti salo-salo sa birthday ng nit yung pamangkit ko. Ano po? Ilang taon na po kayo, Kuya Jason? 21 years old. Oo, oh, okay po. Next, ikaw naman, ano, Kuya, Kuya Jet? Ah, uh, Kuya Jet. Uh, my name is German Tayos Kayagan po. And from Cebu, 19 years old. Wow, from Queen City of the South, Dario, ah? Wow. Grabe. So, may trivia so, ni Eldridge. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, meron pa sana tayong isang guest for tonight, si mm-hmm. Ann. But unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it up to here sa segment natin kasi kakabakuna niya lang. And masama raw yung pakiramdam niya today. But at least we have Kuya Jason and Kuya Jet <clears throat> to... Um, discuss our topics for tonight. And since na-mentioned ko na nga, nawala si Ati, Ati Ann dahil kakabakuna niya and all, I'd like to ask kung nakapagbabakuna na ba kayo kay Jason and kay Jet? Kay Jason? Hindi pa. Huh? Ay, ikaw kay Jet? Hindi pa din. Hindi pa din. Wala pang schedule. Oh, pero, I mean, pwede ka naman ng mabakunan, right? Yes, sir. Oh, kasi... One of the um, more alarming issues that our country is facing now is yung pagdating ng Delta variant ng COVID dito sa Pilipinas. And it's actually one of the hot topics that we'll be discussing tonight. I mean, have you guys heard kung meron na bang Delta variant dyan sa lugar ninyo? So far, sa awa ni Lord, wala pa naman. Mm. Gladly, wala pa. Gladly. Ganun din sa amin. Huwag na natin anahin. Glad lang ha. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mabuti lang ang wala dito. Mm-hmm. Diyan sa inyo, Hans. Sa, sa inyo, amin, sa wala pa. actually, wala pa akong nababalitaan. But most of the Delta variants na na, kuha na, ay, na na-discover natin, actually not discover, but na-record natin sa Philippines, mm-hmm. ay nanggaling sa NCR. That's why, yes. um, nag- balak nila mag-impose ng another ECQ na naman from August 6 to 20 and yan nga umaalman na naman yung mga tao and totoo naman at kasi etong delta variant di ba we have this original strain of covid na then and be and thousand out of that meron tayong iba't ibang variants we have this alpha variant beta then now we have this delta virus na sinasabi na nila which is more transmissible and more contagious than the other variants yung alpha variant natin na nag originate from the original strain, sinabi na it's 50% more contagious than that of the original strain. And what's alarming in here is that the Delta variant daw natin is 50% na mas transmissible kesa dun sa Alpha variant, which is 50% more contagious na naman dun sa original strain. Kaya sobrang nakakakaba siya. And so far, meron tayong 266 cases na na-record dito sa Philippines. Kaya nga daw, um, pinabalak nila na mag-lockdown na naman. And, 
yun. Actually, yung mga sinabi kong ganyan, to, para naman sa ating mga viewers, it actually came from Yale School of Public Health. And <clears throat> isa sa mga issues din na kung paano na, I mean, bukod dun sa pag, um, paglalapag ng another ECQ sa NCR, the most efficient way para ma-prevent natin to is to get vaccinated. That's why we're asking our guests, Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason, about the status of vaccination program sa respective places nyo. Pamusta naman ba yung ano, daloy and sino na yung mga nabakunahan so far? Start kayo, Kuya Jet. So far, yung na- mga inuuna is mga senior citizens. So, you know, mm. mas, mas prone sila sa ano, since week na sila. Mm-mm. And wala pa naman ako nababalita ang sked kung kailan ako pagpapabakuna. Pero as much as possible, sana mas madali or as, as, early, as, as, as early as possible sana. Mamasama na ako. Gusto ko na, mag, gusto ko na gumala. <laughs> <laughs> Pero nakapila ka na Kuya Jet sa ano mga mababakunahan wala hindi ko din alam kasi ah, hindi pa. may mga in charge naman oh. aghihintay lang kami ng announcements mm. okay. in terms of the brands diyan naman sa inyo kuya Jason ano yung mga available brands and like do you have a choice or isa lang uh, I think wala kami choice sa brands and currently yung brand nga nandito ngayon ay yung yung una yung Sinov- Sinovac Mm-mm. and then yung Moderna at recently yung ano yung sa Janssen. And yung sa Janssen ngayon, yun yun I think yung lang yung mayroon dito na na stock. And currently tinabakunan mm-hmm. yung priority nung vaccine na yun ay sa mga matatanda at sa mga mga adults na may karamdam, karamdaman. So true. Mm-mm. And ayun nga, actually nagtatanong din yung mga iba like Bukod dun sa, pag, I mean, kinakaban kasi yung iba since di ba ito like compared sa other variants ng um, COVID, ng SARS-CoV-2, ito daw yung pinakamabilis makahawa. But the good news naman, actually, it's, um, para naman hindi tayo ganun kabahan na kapag bakunado ka na raw netong, ng kahit anong vaccine, the chances of getting seriously ill because of COVID is extremely low. Lower. So, yun nga talagang alternative and I no, not alternative but yung mismong solution para mabawasan natin yung pagkalat nitong Delta variant na to. Kasi tong Delta variant, it actually originated uh, it was first discovered kasi hindi naman natin alam kung saan siya talaga first nag-originate, di ba? It was first discovered in India in the late 2020 hanggang sa eventually ay kumalat na siya sa Southeast Asia and pati tayo dito sa Pilipinas ay apektado na. Ngayon, should we st- still wear masks? Ang sagot dyan ay yes, of course. Kasi di ba, Eldridge, kahit naman bakunado naman na tayo and all, di ba? Matatamaan ka natin... pa din. So true. But yun nga, um, mahalaga na mabakuna na tayo as soon as possible um, to be able to um, perform our social responsibility mm. sa ating mga kasama sa bay, of course, and pati na rin sa mga iba na nakakasalamuhan natin. But then, yes. yan, enough I think enough na muna tayo dun sa hard news. Punta naman tayo sa sports. And na, I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sports enthusiast ba kayo, Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason? I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Basketball fan. Fan ng... Basketball. Oh, basketball. 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 Mm. Ikaw, Kuya Jason? Um, hindi, masyado, hindi ka ano, sports oriented niya tao. Mm, okay. But then for sure, um, we all sure. have something to say. Meron sa... naman din. Meron din. Ayan. And kahit hindi naman tayo ganito sports en- enthusiast, right? Or lalo na kung sports enthusiast or athlete, we all have something to say. So recently, um, the historic feat of Heidelin Diaz for bringing home the gold medal for the Philippines for the first time in 89 years. So weightlifting competition na ginanap sa Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Now, luckily... We have someone with us na may direct experience at nakasama dati si Heidelin Diaz yes. who would share his story. <coughs> Ayan, wait lang. Tawagin naman natin. Siguro di na bago. Sir Franz! Yun, Sir Franz! Ayan na, ayan na, ayan na. <laughs> Hi, Sir Franz. Hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> 
Hello sir. Good evening sir. Namute ako. Ayun. Ah, uh, good evening. Eh yeah, magdang magdang gabi. Ah, uh, ano yung gusto niyo malaman? Go ahead. Ah, uh, okay. First of all, ay kailan yung first encounter mo with Hydeline Diaz? And baka pwede naman makwento mo kung ano yung mga nasubaybayan mo sa kanya in her journey. Hmm. In her journey. Nung first na na-meet namin si Hydelin, we were doing a story for um, the Olympics nga nung Rio 2016. So back then, uh, we we actually know, tinitingnan kasi namin kung sino yung mga uh, malalakas or yung mga possibly na may chance for for the Olympics. Uh, I I know the the Olympics committee, no, alam naman nila yan kung sino yung mga talaga may potential uh, who... Uh, would probably land a, a gold for the Philippines and luckily nanalo si Hydeline ng silver medal uh nung, mm. nung Rio 2016 and uh, we were there during nung nung <coughs> document namin yung uh, journey niya uh, from training uh, actually yung tagal nga namin naghintay <laughs> nung isa, isang mm. ano isang hindi ko makakalimutan yun kasi nakapila talaga yung mga gustong maka, makausap sa uh, tsaka yung Kasi this was before, uh, before pa siya makilala na Heidi Lynn Diaz, uh, bago pa siya makilala na um, ano pala tayo, may, potential, may chance pala tayo uh, sa Olympics. Um, I also, uh, when, when, nung, nung nakilala namin siya, napakasimple lang yan tao. And makikita nyo dun sa Rizal Memorial, hindi ko makakalimutan yun kasi uh, unang-una, lapit lang nun dito sa, sa bahay namin. Uh, we, we went to Rizal Memorial, dun yung training niya. And makikita mo doon kung gaano ka uh, yung environment ng mga atleta natin. Makikita mo na uh, kakayanin kaya niya uh, at uh, yung facility ba na meron tayo dito uh, na ito yung pinagki-trainingan niya. Um, yun yung mga umiikot sa isipan ko noon eh. Kakayanin kaya niya with having this type of facility uh, na mamamatch yung yung ko ano man yung facility na meron yung ibang bansa, di ba? Mm-hmm. And luckily enough, di ba? Makikita mo na yung talent talaga ng tao lumabas na masasabi natin na hey, wala yan sa ano, wala yan dun sa kapab- ano, nasa kapabilidad yan ng tao and yung determination niya. And after that, uh, sinuboy ba yan ko rin siya ulit nung SEA Games where she luckily won the gold uh, for mm-hmm. the Philippines. Uh, na-interview namin siya and she was very determined to win the gold for, for Tokyo. Uh, 2020. Pero ito nga, nangyari yung pandemic. Um, pero yun, uh, I think she was uh, very determined to to win this. And uh, she deserves all the, the credit. Tama. And speaking of credit, talaga namang deserve niya lahat ng credit. I mean, I could still remember that time nung sa news. Actually, nabalita yun. I don't know if may nakakita sa inyo na dati, na par- parang people were neglecting Hydeleen nung nag ask siya ng support. Kasi yun nga tema, kagaya nga ng sabi ni Sir Franz, yung mga facilities na available natin dito for training ay parang hindi ganun ka enough. I mean, compared dun sa mga facilities from other top caliber athletes na galing sa ibang bansa din, ay yun nga, mahirap nga naman since hindi ganun kataas yung funding natin for sports dito sa Pilipinas. And then, there we are nung nakuha na yung gold ni Hydeline screaming, Filipino pride, proud to be Pinoy. And... Mm. I mean, it's rightful for us na maging proud na maging Pinoy. But at the same time, this is a call for the government itself to um, increase our support and translate that support uh, into concrete ways para tulungan yung mga athletes natin na nire-representa yung Pilipinas sa international stage. And that's just what Tideline Diaz did in the ongoing Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And talaga na, na nga namang nakaka-proud yun. Yeah, I just like to add. Uh, tama yung sinabi ni Hans, and also as uh, as a Filipino, uh, I'm very sure na yung mga kapwa natin na Filipino rin, parang naalala nyo nung si Efrem Bata, di ba, sumikat sa billiards. Lahat tayo na ingganyo tayo mag billiards noon. Uh, mm-hmm. Nung sumikat si Manny Pacquiao, di ba, lahat tayo na na ingganyo na, uy, try ko nga mag boxing. <laughs> and uh, ganun naman yung Filipino, di ba, yung pag makita natin na yung 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 kapabilidad ng tao na inspire tayo i think yun yung pinakamalaking uh, na naihambag ni Hydeline sa atin yung yung inspiration 
Uh, and more than the gold eh. Uh, sa tingin ko nga, alam nyo, kahit hindi nanalo ng gold si Idilin, pag, pag idiwang pa rin natin siya eh, di ba? Masaya pa rin tayo sa kahit nanalo siya o hindi. Uh, kasi nga nakikita natin sa kanya yung pagpuporsigin niya. So, para sa akin, manalo man siya ng gold, manalo hindi, yung mga ibang atleta natin, manalo o hindi. Masaya na ako kasi yung makita lang natin yung Pilipinas nandun sa Olympics, ano na yung malaking karangalan na yun na nanarecognize sa bansa, yung bansa natin. And just in contrast dun sa mga iba bansa, like yung sa, ano, sa, sa Taiwan, never pa silang na-recognize as their country. ba diba? yung, 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 hmm. yung heaviness lang na yun na para ma-recognize tayo as Philippines, malaking karangalan na yun for, for the Olympics. Kasi yung ibang bansa nga, yun yung pinaglalaban nila, ba diba? yung makilala sila bilang bansa. As, so, oh, yun, isa yun. Tapos, uh, also just to add dun kay Hans, yung, um, yung support nga doon sa mga atleta, I'm very sure yung neglect ng government nandyan, uh, and even, um, let's say, corruption, nandyan din yan. Uh, I mean, hindi yan makawala, lalo na sa sports, kasi it's a very, uh, it's a very, um, har- uh, top, ano yun eh, kapag isa yan sa mga, uh, talaga mainit when it comes to the sports na industry natin. And, nakakalungkot lang na ang nagsasuffer dito yung mga atleta. Athletes. Diba? At the end of the day, imbis na sila na nga yung naghihirap, sila na yung, uh, sila na yung, um, kumbaga, lumalaban para sa atin. At the end of the day, sila pa rin yung talo pag uwi nila dito, kahit nanalo na sila. So, para dun sa ginawa ni Heidelin, uh, di ba, yung nag- uh, humingi siya ng, uh, nag-post siya, nag siya ng call for uh, help. Yung help. sinasabi ng iba na yung 3 point, uh, I think 3 million, uh, yung mga iba ako nabasa na uh, nagko-comment sa kanya na doon sa post niya na uh, dapat maging masaya ka na nga, binigyan ka ng 3 million or dapat maging masaya ka na nga kasi pinahand ka ng, ng gobyerno. Hindi ka pa ba masaya doon? Parang ganun. And to be honest, hindi ho enough yung 3 million. Tama. Pa- Hindi hindi kulang pa yon wala pa yung wala pa yon sa ano wala pa yon sa kalingkingan ng ginagastos ng ibang bansa uh, doon sa kumpara doon sa kailangan natin and imagine niyo lang kailangan yung coach na kukunin natin di ba yung coach na kabihasa doon sa pagsali sa Olympics and i think that's one thing din kung kung bakit nanalo si Heidelin um it, one part is your uh, being an athlete and uh, the other part is having a good coach. Kasi kung hindi magaling yung coach mo, eh paano malalaman ko paano ka lalaban? So, Tama. yun lang. And speaking of the coach, nabalitaan nyo rin ba yung parang nagalit daw yung team ng China dun sa coach ni <laughs> Heidelin? Kasi hindi raw niya sinabi dun sa China kung gano'n nakalakas si Heidelin. And nadismaya daw sila doon. <laughs> and, I mean, para sa akin na, personally, bakit mo naman kasi sasabihin kung gano'n nakalakas yung manok mo? Eh di, di ba? And, Hello. I mean, sino namang gagawa sa ano, di ba? Mm-mm. 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 And, then, and, uh, and dami na gold, eh. <laughs> Be happy. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ng China. And ang iconic kaya, ano, narinig nyo yung parang China is the night of gold and it goes to Philippines dun sa video. Like, and nung mismong nag-play na yung national anthem ng awarding, sobrang nakaka-goosebumps yun. <laughs> and, and I think another way, I mean, isa pang rason kung bakit ko ina-admire si Heidelin Diaz ay because meron siyang statement na when she expressed her <coughs> I mean her stand about the West Philippine Sea na atin daw ang West Philippine Sea I mean di ba bukod sa pagiging um, makabayan niya as an athlete that statement in itself is patriotic kasi di ba bilang Pilipino hindi ka lang naman atletang Pilipino isa kang Pilipino na atleta and that Saka, for me is mm, ano sir Saka Hans mind you uh, sundalo ho si si Heidelin kahit, kahit anong ano siya Philippine ano siya uh, Air Force yes, so yes, hindi mawawala rin siguro sa dugo niya na yung ipagtanggol yung bansa natin <laughs> sa athlete uh, athletics man o sa sa ganyang usapin so yun <laughs> kaya naman pala kaya mas kaya lalo naman, tayong magiging proud dapat <laughs> tama <laughs> Ngayon naman, Kuya Jet and Kuya Jason, I mean, given all those things that we have discussed, as a Filipino or as a sports enthusiast, whatever fits for you, man, what does this win of Heidelin Diaz mean for you? 
nung nabalitaan nyo, anong pakiramdam nyo bilang Pilipino? Start tayo kay Kuya Jason. Um, to think about it, it is, it is a big statement talaga. I mean, kumbaga yung, ang nanalo pa is isang babae. So, big statement siya sa mga, sa feminism movement. And also, yung tinutuloy talaga niya, yung issue ng West Philippines is very patriotic talaga. Kumbaga, yeah, to think about it, yung kalaban niya, China yun nun eh. So, I think ganun talaga, yung, is, is, it is actually a big statement. First Olympic code is got ay isang babae. So, yun. Tama. Na, Nakaka-proud siya na, na, yeah, na isang Pilipino ang ano. Tapos tayo ay isa ring Pilipino. Ay, mm-hmm. I'm, sorry. Yes, sir. Sige ko lang. Uh, kanina, di ba, we were discussing. Sorry, ano to ah. Uh, based dun sa uh, vac- uh, sa ano sa covid may kaka-post lang up uh, ng World Health Organization may passport na ang World Health Organization so uh, if you have been vaccinated punta na ho kayo sa i think they they're already issuing a passport uh, para dun sa mga na vaccinate na uh, pupunta sa Bureau of Quarantine and you'll be issued a passport so, so, international lang na to. Kakapause lang, ngayon lang. Passport po yan, sir. Exclusive for vaccinated people. Oo. So, so, ibig sabihin, kapag hindi ka vaccinated, hindi ka pwedeng mag-flight internationally. Uh, this, this will be one of the requirements uh, moving forward. Mm, I mean, yeah. hindi Kaka- pa siya... release hindi... lang. Ah, so na-release na. So, ibig sabihin... Papalitan na niyan yung dating passport so we'll have to get yeah, additional sa from, from your passport oh. para siyang visa oh. na ini-issue okay. ng Bureau of Quarantine. Okay. I think meron na dito sa Pilipinas. Pa, uh, yun public ano lang, public awareness lang. Nice. Thank you thank you. Go ahead, balik tayo, balik tayo. <laughs> Ayan. How about you Kuya Jet? Uh, for me, ang uh, makikita ko na ano significance doon sa pagkapanahal is mabibig, mabigyan tayo ng ano no? like something spot in terms of athletics like alam naman natin no, kung ka, gano lang yung mga medal na receive natin from the past years na Olympics so like yung mga future athletes na papasok sa sa anumang, anumang larangan ng basketball any, any sports uh, especially sa weightlifting like meron na silang ano like malaking inspirasyon na yon and something to to ponder on like what Heidelin did bago siya naka naka gold like before hindi siya nakapasok then until she tried like for 15 years like alam mo yon like keep the keep the soul breathe the, keep the passion like like sa photo nation the passion lives on kena yes hanep <laughs> Ang ganda nun na kinunlike niya yung The Passion Lives On dun sa ano. And it's actually very relevant. And na-mention mo rin na 15 years in the making yun. Kasi when... Kasi meron... Some... Wait, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, meron kasi nasabi na, na easy money daw si Heidi Lee. Nagpuhat lang daw ng this and that. Like, hindi nila naisip yung, yung from the start ni Heidi Lee from where she came from. Uh, like from mm-hmm. starting from the bottom now she's here. Ganun. Like, na, may nakita akong comments kasi na three minutes lang may millions oh, na si Idilin. Hindi na nila naisip. <laughs> like, hindi na naisip kung paano nagsimula. Saan ang galing? Anong hirap na dinanas? Na, tapos wala pang masyadong funding. Di, hmm. Ginagawa lang. Wala, wa, para wala, parang wala lang sa kanila yun. Tama. And yun nga, parang nai-invalidate yung, all, yung hard work na in-exert ni Heidelin for the past 15 years. Like, akala nila, she just stepped on that stage, did her routine dun sa pagbubuhat, and wala, meron na siyang gold and um, 50, more than 50 million pesos. And, I mean, meron din kasi akong nakita na Facebook post na sinasabi na, hala, naghihirap na ako, parang gusto ko na lang mag-weightlifting. And... I don't find that very funny. I think it's kind of in- insensitive, lalo na sa mga athletes natin na nag-exert talaga ng effort para makakuha ng karangalan at may uwi yun sa Pilipinas. And gaya nga ng sinabi mo, we should not ignore 
her efforts from the past kung paano siya kung paano niya narating kung nasaan na siya ngayon di ba may mga may kasabihan nga tayo na like the rightful ones to be part of your victory are those who stayed with you in the process or in the making and do deserve niya lahat ng credit na yun kailangan din natin i-recognize yung mga past efforts niya yung mga past trainings niya and yung mga people involved to produce an Olympic champion gaya nga ni Heidling Diaz and hopefully ay makakuha tayo ulit ng isa pang gold medal I mean I want if na basa nyo na sa news kanina because it was all over my news feed and um, several headlines sa mga news platforms then yung recent um, silver silver medal na guaranteed na kain ano Nesty Patesho which who is a Filipina boxer set to um meron siyang final match for gold um sa Tuesday and inaabangan din yan kasi if ever that would be the second gold for Philippines na and diba and very historic in 2021 if ever kung manalo man siya doon and, and yes sir na meet ko na rin si Nesty uh we mm-hmm. were we were in one of the uh, one of the awarding ceremonies for for her um and binigyan yun yung parang in award siya for winning in the sea games and nakita rin na rin namin yung yung potential ni Nesty doon uh so our other reporters kanina nga lang uh, we were discussing nga doon sa um yung yung capability din ni Nesty hindi rin biro yung pinanggalingan ng tao uh, especially that um i mean unboxing it's well funded uh, kasi nga uh, si uh, senator Manny is there diba? pero um, it's one of the most non neglected uh, sports uh, that we have pero makikita mo na yung yung puro sige ni ni Nesty nandoon um, mm-hmm. and h- hindi yon ano eh i mean yun yung hindi kayang tumbasan ng kahit anong halaga yung yung Tama. yung yung capability ng tao at saka yung kanyang uh, eagerness to to win and to to ano nga to 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 do this uh, as a sport. Mm. Ayun and diba, it's very important to note na yung dalawang athlete, Filipino athletes na pinag-usapan natin ay parehas na babae. And di ba? Napakahalaga to. It's a statement that we are making in the society that calls for inclusivity and representation because women are often underrepresented in the society, often belittled. Ganyan. And this is a very um, historic then na babae ang unang um, gold medalist natin sa Olympics. And speaking of that, um, this bridges us to another hot topic that we will be discussing in connection with the Canon ambassadorship issue which I think I, uh, um, Sir Franz has so, a lot to say. Because um, in this issue, um, many people bashed and criticized Canon for not including a woman in their lineup for ambassadors, saying na, bakit puro lalaki yung mga ambassadors ng Canon when in this society we're calling for inclusivity? And there were charges against them na sinasabi na misogynist na misogynistic daw yung move na yun ng canon. Ngayon, ito, isa-isa kong tatanungin tayong lahat dito. Do you think na yung move na yun na walang babae sa lineup ng ambassadors ng canon is misogynistic? Why or why not? And But before that, for context, para rin sa mga viewers na nanonood natin ngayon, let's first dis- define misogyny. I mean, kasi di ba, misogyny, it's the outright hatred for women. Ayan, it's that's basically it. Do you think um um it's manifesting hatred for women na walang babae dun? Start tayo siguro kay Eldridge. Sa akin, yes. Uh, uh, miso- uh, ano ulit yan? Ano ulit yung pronunciation nun? Misogynistic. Uh, misogy- mm-hmm. mi- misogynistic yung uh, sa ambassador ng canon. Kasi, uh, bakit puro lalaki if uh, the woman uh, making the, ano, no, the step na mag ano na they they making the anon uh, tawag dito Mer- naglalabas na rin sila di ba uh, may nakikita na tayong women na photographers na well known meron din tayong nakikita ng women na uh, nag start na rin mag photography and with that move of kano na puro lalaki yung ambassador it's kind of like parang disrespect to the ano to the community of women kasi bakit 
bakit puro men yung yung ano nila yung napansin other than na uh, may mga babae naman din na nag uh, ano na nagpo-photography and stuff pero it's for me lang pa- baka merong reason si Canon for that ano na ang lineup niya is uh, puro lalaki pero still for the general public or siguro sa akin na lang uh, it's kind of disrespect to the women community yun siya sa akin mm tama ikaw naman kay Jason ay nakamute ka kay Jason ayun no na hindi pa ako sure na misogynist siya pero yung following statement kasi doon na talaga yung nagsimula lahat si Victor Aguilar din sumama lahat kasi yung response nila eh, kasi kakaiba eh yun na lang talaga eh. kasi at that point yung response nila eh sinisiparate nila yung babae. So, mm. yung, ay, personally, tinawag ko yun as panic-induced, panic-induced, ban-aid solution. Kasi, nung mm. na, na-realize nila na may malaking outcry sa ginawa nila, inanatag ko at least remedy the problem, they end up getting worse. <laughs> Di ba, nasa nakita niyo po yung, yung response nila noong una. Mm-hmm. Tama, I think same statement Like dun sa response Yung statement na nilabas ng canon Kasi kung ako, kung iisipin ko yung Kung nakita ko lang yun ha Kapag walang nag-back Flash na mga ganong statements I won't think na it's outright Misogynistic But I think that it's uninclusive And kulang And may misrepresentation Kaya, Bakit nga ba dominated siya ng male? It's not like it's screaming na we hate women and women um, don't have a place in photography. It's not that. It's the fact that Canon missed a rep- I missed someone that could make the rep- their ambassadorship representation more inclusive. Lalo na ngayon na kailangan ng babae sa iba't ibang fields. And mm-hmm. ikaw, Sir Franz. Ay, wait. Bago si Sir Franz, si Jet muna para final si Sir Franz. As a photographer. nag-joke nag sa comment like nakakatawa lang kasi anba kaya daw walang babae kasi ambassador daw kung ibasa dress sana may babae so, natawa ako noon na natawa talaga ako noon <laughs> like pero kidding aside kidding aside kasi para sa akin lang mas madami noon talagang magagaling kahit kahit hindi natin sabihin na misogyny makikita natin yung ano meron lang name tapos may field like pinapakita na ito si ano siya yung pinakamagaling sa for example ito sa anong genre like mali naman para sa akin na pangit naman tignan dapat kasi compared doon sa ibang mga ambassadors like sa brand like brand ambassador lang dala na yun yung, yung pangalan ng brand kaso ito pangalan ng ano photographer tapos ito genre like pinapakita na lang yung ano nung siya lang na yung pinakamagaling like Ganun. Tapos wala pa yung wala pa yung mga yung mas maganda sana sa uh, kasalay yung nasa rainbow side mga LGBTQ na ano mas madami naman madami nga naman kasi yung talented kasi I believe na photography is beyond gender or ano madami hmm. talaga na magagaling na artist hmm. yun lang masasabi siya is for everyone yes ma'am yeah Thank you, Kuya Jen. How about you, Sir Brian? Um, for me, um, like what I said dun nga sa, sa na-post ko, yung sa uh, ni-release ko, um, para sa akin kasi, I believe it was a PR nightmare. Uh, it was a PR issue. Tapos, uh, it was interpreted as misogynistic. Na, yun nga yung sabi ni Hans, diba? if you put this into context, uh, it's screaming that you hate women. Diba? That's misogyny. Um, pero, when you, when you say um, it was unre- um, it wasn't well represented or inclusivity wasn't put into context. Yung parang hindi na isali yung inclusivity of the, of, the, of the program. I think that was the problem. Hindi misogyny. The misogynist, uh, ang, the, ang misogyny dito yung mga nagko-comment. Kasi, mm. yung mga comments na nakaka- yung akala nila nakakatawa, 
na uh, yun nga sabi nila ay eh, kasi ano like what uh, Jet Menso yung natawa nga siya na uh, dapat daw ambassador is that's misogyny yung yung comment na yun so I think that was hindi masyadong ano hindi masyadong na relate yun and you can put labels in photography na uh, isang mm-hmm. isang I think that's one thing that ano eh uh, that struck me na bakit ano bakit bakit naging ano na naging issue na kung ilan yung babae, ilan yung lalaki, bakit walang LGBTQ+, bakit walang ano, should should that be the the case uh, every time? Bakit ba kailangan ba palagi uh, tatlong babae, tatlong lalaki, patas ba kailangan palagi? Uh, papaano kung wala talagang makuha silang ambassador na babae, 'di ba? Is that our problem, 'di ba? Uh, that should be their problem, 'di ba? Uh, I think more than uh, what we do as photographers is yung wag natin lagyan ng label di ba yung yung photography hindi naman na, hindi naman yan you, you can't measure a photographer based on gender di ba uh, being a woman or being uh, being a woman or being a man doesn't make you a good photographer di ba uh, being a good photographer makes uh, in- requires a good visionary hindi yan, hindi yan ang gagaling sa gender ng natin, di ba? Uh, maaaring babae ka, maaaring lalaki ka, pero lahat tayo may mata, di ba? Yung mata ba natin, may gender ba yung mata natin? <laughs> masabi ba natin, ay, mata na to. Pag tinanggal yan sa, ano mo, sa, sa ulo mo yung mata mo, masabi ba na, ay, mataya ng babae, mataya ng lalaki? Siyempre, hindi, di ba? Um, gender can only be, uh, nung binuo yung camera, or when, when the concept of photography came into play, Never naman nilang sinabi na, oy mga lalaki lang yung pwede mag-photography, yung mga babae, hindi. Hindi naman ganun yung naging kaso. It just so happened na photography was invented by men. Y- yun ni eh, alam nga naman, di ba? That's history for you. Pero, uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of the, in terms of photographic history, sa totoo lang, marami rin mga ba- babaeng, ano, and, simula pa lang nung, ano, nung, nung na-conceptualize yung concept ng photography, babae na talaga yung ilan sa mga nagsimula nung, nung yung isa, il, ilan sa mga gagaling, di ba? Um, and I think that's one thing na na-miss kasi masyado maraming ano eh. Ang problema sa social media ngayon, ang daming mabilis mag-react. Yung hindi mo na nag-iisip, yung tipong nadadala ng ano, yung para pagsabi, uy, oo nga, no? Sige nga, comment mm-hmm. din ako. Mukhang ano to, popcorn. Maybe Labas clouds. natin yung popcorn. <laughs> o, ano, so tinatan yung mga comments. Yun yung problema. Uh, I think more than yun nga ito sinasabi rin ng mga nagko-comment ba diba? uh, hindi siya misogynistic the commenters were misogynistic uh, i'll give you one example i saw a post uh, it was a professor from one of the premier colleges here in the philippines and he was commenting na uh, o oh, sige pa- parang uh, let, hindi, hindi ito yung exact sinabi niya pero uh, i'm paraphrasing parang ang pagkasabi niya Ah, uh, eh, next time ang ambassador na kunin niyo si Vice Ganda, parang ganoon. Tapos nagtawanan sila lahat. Uh, I mean, sh- should that be ano? Eh, parang yun ba talaga yung ano? I mean, hindi naman yun yung issue, 'di ba? That's misogyny. 'Di ba? So, I think Canon wasn't misogynistic. Uh, it was ano, it was uh, it, it was a PR problem. Oh, it was it was a PR problem that it wasn't inclusive enough. Uh, mm-hmm. When you talk about inclusivity, it doesn't involve just gender. Diba? Masaya ba mm-hmm. natin? Yung ambassadors ba nila, lahat ba yun? Uh, na-represent ba niya yung buong Pilipinas? May ambassador ba doon na taga Mindanao? May ambassador ba doon na taga Cebu? May ambassador ba doon na May taga Luzon? Ba? May bata Senior. ba doon? May matanda? Diba? I, mean, I think that's what... Uh, kung, yun ang problema. Eh. And, kung baga, it, it can open a whole can of worms kung so, uh, inclusivity yung pag-uusapan natin pero yun nga photography kasi you can put labels 'di ba in, in photonation never naman tayo naglagay ng labels uh, i even saw a post na uh, yung isang photographer was calling for uh, le- ano kalimutan na natin lahat yan yung mga maling pag-iisip kaya let's create a group let's again andito na ho yung group andito na yung photonation dito uh, walang misogyny dito kasi nakikita natin na Uh, babae man o lalaki I mean if you do photography you're in di ba that, that's that's mm-hmm. uh, that should be the case palagi di ba and yun nga na, mas na highlight yung mga issues uh, other than this so I think we should go back to the root of it all which is photography 
Ayan. Hanep. Kaya gustong-gusto ko sa surprise ng DDS kasi may bago ako natututunan. <laughs> so, <Ako> ayun. <laughs> Ang deep nung gusto ko yung sinabi. Understand. Yes. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Gustong-gusto ko yung sinabi ni Sir Franz na photography has no label. Like, why in the, fi- in the first place did we put labels na photography is for men or for women when in fact, uh-huh. gaya nga ng sinabi ni Jet kanina na sa Photo Nation, lahat naman tayo doon and wala namang sinagsasabi na kailangan babae ka or lalaki to be a photographer. ba diba? All medium together and the passion lives on. And, I mean, nakaka-amazing yung statement ni Sir Franz like about sa eyes. It's not merely just about gender. Eh. It's about the photo itself, the stories, mm-hmm. how we do what we do, and how we master our own crafts. It's our passion. And yung mga ganong issues, I, yes, I agree na napalala lang siya dahil dun sa mga comments <laughs> and other people who are overly talking about it. Yes, the issue was it was not inclusive enough, lalo na sa panahon ngayon. But then again, it's something to ponder on. Like, are we over... I mean, I re overly criticizing things, or maybe we could just step back and deconstruct the problem even more para ma address natin yung totoong issue. And I guess in this issue, na palalang nga siya ng mga tao and, comment- and mga commenters were those that were really memes and remarks. So I think uh, for I'm that. S- sorry, sorry, dagdag ko lang. Sorry, sorry yes, to put in. May, uh, may isa pang pause uh, was, was referring to Sausage Fest. Natawa ka ako doon. Why would you label it as a sausage fest? Uh, just saying na, na men sila. I mean, uh, I can't blame the person kasi literally, it's a sausage fest. Di ba? Pero, uh, thinking about it that way, uh, siguro yung pananaw lang natin, uh, I think that's uh, what should be uh, bottom line. Yung, yung pananaw natin should be more open to uh, thinking about it, photography lang. Uh, labas tayo doon sa ano, uh, th- let's go out of that uh, concept na men, women, ganyan, children, older uh, people, o kaya uh, LGBT, di ba? So, yun. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Hans. Thank you. Sorry. Ayan. Um, meron tayong Facebook user sabi, sir, galing sir friend sa pagkalatag about misogyny. And Sobra. I agree naman to that. Mm-mm. Tama, di ba, Eldridge? But since we're talking about photography stuff na, I think we could conclude this discussion because in our next segment, we will be interviewing on Spotlight two fo- Two, um, two featured photographers that we'll be having tonight. But before we end this discussion, I would like first to hear from J- Kuya Jason and, and Kuya Jet. Kung may mga gusto man kayong i-promote or gustong i-shout out ng mga friends and families, this is your time. Kuya Jet. Uh, gusto ko lang mag- magpasalamat sa Born in Film, sa Photo Nation, uh, sa lahat sa inyo sir Franz, kay Hans, Eldridge and Jason and sa wala na wala na akong ala mm. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed kasi first time thank you po yeah. thank you for the chance congrats congrats Jet <laughs> congrats Jet sana tayo mag-host next Hans <laughs> tatlo na kayong huwag na ba tatlo na tayo <laughs> Ikaw naman, Kuya Jason. Ay, nakamute. Na, nakamute si Ay, nakamute. nakamute siya. Okay. Gusto ko lang magpasalamat sa iyo lahat dito kasi first time ko pala ito dito. Nakamute. And gusto ko rin magpasalamat sa mga photographers ko sa, dito sa Dipolog, na mga friends ko ngayon. Sila yung kasi yung nag-invite na akin, sa akin dito sa Photonation. So, which in turn, napunta ko dito. So, yun lang. Ayan. Thank Lagas you, Kuya Jason. Mm, congratulations then. And thank you for the both of you for sparing your time yeah. to be with us tonight. Napaka-solid lang discussion natin. And thank you for your input sa lahat ng hot topics na meron tayo for tonight. And yun, that actually I'm concludes sorry. our hot topic segment. We will be back after Wait, Sir? mag announce lang ako uh, for for everyone okay. watching um, please don't forget to ano uh, tayo next month ng, sa August uh, we'll be having our very first analog uh, bootcamp so para dun sa mga interesado na matuto sa film photography uh, we'll do this online tuturo ko sa inyo how you can develop at home uh, pupunta tayo dun sa 
darkroom natin and we'll we'll do a, a demo uh, how to develop so it's free for all uh, so uh may, may mga ilang portions lang na uh, won't be free pero uh, i encourage you guys to join kasi it will be part of our celebration for world photography day uh, so yun yung inaabangan natin and then september we'll be having our very first photocon so magkakaroon ho tayo ng fair uh, it's going to be a photo nation fair that will will be dubbed as photocon so kung hindi pa kayo nakapunta sa isang convention it will be a photography convention uh, it's going to be online also and we invite uh, all our, our friends uh, to join that si sir clinton who's watching sir clinton sali ka doon baka uh, you want to share your ano yung collection mo ng cameras kahit mga photos lang nila plus exhibit natin doon online lang naman uh, we will we'll create a page for you diba para uh, maano natin and uh, isipin nyo it go it's going to be something na parang para siyang ano parang uh, kung nakapunta na kayo sa Asia Pop Comic Con diba sa World Trade Center siya ginagawa uh, pag pumasok ka doon sa World Trade Center you can go to different booths parang ganun yung idea natin for it pero magiging online siya so ayun and please don't forget to uh, uh, to tune in maglalabas na ho yung mga uh, photo nation academy yun yung mga ano mga mini mentor ni Hans <laughs> lalabas na ho yung mga back ating podcast uh, uh, mag- magiging anim na ho uh, or pito na yung magiging podcast ng ng Born in Twenty Photo Nation uh, three podcasts will be airing every Saturdays and three podcasts will podcasts will be airing every sun- Sundays and it will begin by i think mid august and it will run for an entire month in celebration of world photography day and then magkatapos siya for photocon uh, which is in september so yun lang ho. thank you thank you hans oh thank you sir there's that's a lot of things to look forward to in born in film but that's it for our segment, for Hot Topic segment. Again, thank you, Kuya Jason and Kuya Jet, for sparing your time to be with us. We will be back after a short break for the Spotlight segment of this podcast. So please be sure to get back to us as we welcome two photographers that we'll be featuring for this segment. One of the things that makes anything more enjoyable is being able to share it and being part of a community. And quite frankly, what I get from uh, Photo Nation is the fact that it's so non judgmental. They're so accepting of people and I like that about Photo Nation that people are willing to do that. Well, Photo Nation is hindi lang siya Filipino-based international group. Ano siya, one big, big, big happy family talaga siya. Photo Nation is just one huge family. I think probably the thing I like the most about Photo Nation is the fact that it's a supportive community, not there to score points. Photo Nation, a platform that is uh, snow bashing. Yes. You ask for help, you get help. The best part about Photo Nation is that everyone gets a chance to showcase their stuff. And if you ask, how did you get that? Um, can you teach me? The people respond and you're like, yeah, I, I'm actually learning things here. We all started as a beginner. Whether it's your self-taught or you learn from masters or you learn from YouTube, you should be humble enough to know and to accept that people who are willing to learn, we have to appreciate that because it's actually promoting the hobby or the passion that we love, which is photography. Malaki talaga yung impact sa pag improve ko as a photographer kasi hindi lang basics yung tinuturo, parang yung advanced stuff na. I'm always welcome na uh, idea na magkaroon ng isang community ang mga photographer. Yung imbis na magbangayan, nagtutulungan. It feels really nice to be part of Photo Nation because of how active the group is. A lot of inspiration for me to take in. I expect na ganito yung welcome ng Photo Nation sa akin. Napagsama-sama ng Photo Nation ang mga photographer, ano man ang lahi nila. I've met a lot of people from different regions sa country natin. Mas na-widen yung network ko. Masaya. Masaya. 
nakakapag-share ka ng free. Yun yeah, na mas manada opportunidad. Kasi health chances na mas kita grande din yung yun thinking about things na nuway at na talya ko nila. I feel like I'm with a family that uh, supports what I love and what I'm passionate about. Mararamdaman mo na may value yung gawa mo and mas nakikita mo na there, there is an opportunity for you to grow in this industry. I joined Facebook a year ago and you are the first group I joined. One big international family. It's great to be part of Porto Nation International. Aside from the photography means, pinaka gusto na ako sa Photo Nation is activities like photography of the week and the mga theme of the week. I was really happy to be featured as the photographer of the week. It really helps and boosts me. One of the things I like about Photo Nation is the fact that it's not limited by any demographic, by any location, or by year. Tuwang tuwa ako ang siyempre first time kung maging part ng isang member na may marang malaking community. Maganda experience ko. Nakita na ko na daghan mga parehas na kong edad. Ang nisulay o photography, hindi sa mga ang sabi ko ulit. Nakatabang siya ka. Mag-grow ko as a photographer. So, mak- maka-inspire siya sa mga pasama na ko na bagungan pa. Pag, pag-join ako ano yung photo nation kay Marag at first kay Marag nakulbaan ko ato kay international siya. Si Pag-ayat ko kayo to yung photo nation kay nagiging na dumaduma nga aktividades kay Dinobingo. Tapos kung mga nagiging pasalit nga pag-pakaorecognizan nagiging kas kanya kong agdadamo người ta thường hay nói rằng là khi mà bạn muốn đi thật là nhanh thì bạn đi một mình nhưng mà khi mà bạn muốn đi xa thì bạn sẽ đi cùng với cả những người khác. Thành ra là khi mà tham gia vào những cái giúp chơi ảnh như là Photoshop thì nó rất là nhiều sẽ nhìn được thấy rất là nhiều bức ảnh đẹp và qua đó thì và và cũng và cũng được gặp rất nhiều là photo rất là giỏi. Thế thành ra là qua đó thì Photo Sobrang ganda ng podcast quality. Yun yung magagawa ng Pinoy. So, nakaproud din. Nagulat din po ako lalo kasi almost around the world kasali po. Eh. So, parang ang laki pong privilege sa akin na sa Philippines po nag-start ng Porta Nation. Pinoy pride kasi nga, di ba? Doang ano, yung group is sa uh, Pilipinas. So, parang kaya natin makisabay at maliit tayong bansa. I think Porta Nation, parang for me, yung always active now. So, ito din po kayo naging part ko sa work niya. Hindi ibigin na din po ang opportunity na ginigit ulit po sa mga. Maraming akong natutunan, lalo yung sa masterclass. Photo Nation expanded my global knowledge, especially regarding Filipino photography. The Philippines seems to be a pretty excited in actively pursuing the craft. Feeling ko na welcome pa pala na mas yung mayo mga toxic na mga tao. Nakakaugmat na nakaka-inspire sa ganyan mga picture ng ganyan na pinatawat, pinapailin sa mga bawat saro. At Worldwide Photo Walk, my gosh, I was surprised that that many people showed up and it brought tears to my eyes. It was brilliant. There's so much love. I think that's the best way to say it. There's so much love in this community. The truth is, this is merely a setback. This is merely one huge mountain that we have to traverse.
Oh. Welcome back to Breaking Batteries. I'm sorry about that technical issue. But picking up from where we left off, we used to talk about photography and Canon stuff. Canon stuff. And as the last topic in our previous segment, ngayon na napag-usapan naman na rin natin ang tungkol sa photography, ituloy na natin for this spotlight segment kung saan we will be featuring two visual storytellers na part ng ating Photo Nation International na walang iba kundi si Kuya Paolo and Kuya Bernard. Tawagin na natin sila. Hello, Kuya Bernard and Kuya Paolo. Good evening. Ayan. Kamit ata sila. Ayan. Hi, Kuya Bernard. Hello. Hello. Ayan. Diyan na rin, narinig din ba ni Kuya Paolo? Nakamit ka. Ayan. Ayan. Okay na. <laughs> Sorry kanina, nakamit okay, pala ako. <laughs> Hindi ko nirealize yun. Wait lang. A- akin lang ba lagi or... Ayan. So, pakilala muna natin yung mga sarili natin and then we'll ask questions about your photography journey and hopefully inspire some of our viewers na a member rin ng ating Photo Nation International. So, let's start with Kuya Bernard. Um, pakilala ka kung saan ka, naka, um, kung saan ka galing, what do you do, and kumusta ka ngayong pandemic in general? Yes, uh, my name is Bernard from Bicol. Pero andito ko sa Quezon City and nasa bahay lang ako ngayon. Mm. And then I, I do photography lang as a hobby. Lang. Ano, pwede pa ulit? Sorry, sorry. Uh. Ano, hobby, hobby lang photography. Pag, ah, pag so, may time Pag may time. Eh, ikaw naman Kuya Paolo. So far, uh, okay naman uh, dito sa Naga. Uh, I'm very blessed kasi kahit nagka-pandemic, hindi kami nawala ng trabaho. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung, ano, yung trabaho namin dito. And ano, malaking mm-hmm. bagay. Oh, so working ka na po, Kuya Paolo? Yes po. Uh, actually, actually po, nagtatrabaho ako ngayon sa... Unisys Corporation, nasa opisina po kami ng PSA. Nag-work. Mm-hmm. And yung pagpa-photography, same with Kuya Bernard na hobby, ganun po. Uh, photography for me, uh, sideline ko siya ngayon. Malaking tulong din ngayon ng pandemic kasi uh, weekdays, nagtatrabaho ko sa PSA and weekend, nag-event nag event kami. Okay lang naman mag-event dito sa sa uh, dito mm-hmm. sa Bicol kasi hindi naman siya high risk sa COVID. Although mga intimate oh, events naman yung okay. uh, na mention na rin. namin. Ay, sorry. Oh, intimate events. So tama yan kasi hindi pa ganun ka-safe ng mass gatherings ngayon. But total na mention mo na rin Kuya Paolo yung about sa pag sa sideline mo in photography, maybe you could share with us kung paano ka nagsimula sa photography, kung paano mo siya na-discover, and paano mo eventually na-realize na um, you could use this as your sideline para kumita, ganyan. About your story in photography. Well, uh, first of all, uh, I started photography last uh, 2019 after I graduated college. Uh, nag-start ako mag-photography. But before, uh, when I was in college, i- hindi ako uh, mahilig sa photography, pero mahilig ako mag-edit. Mahilig ako gumamit ng Photoshop, pero never ako humawak ng camera before. And then, mm. uh, after na makagraduate ako, yung ate ko, uh, nirigaluhan niya ako ng camera, in hand na camera. From there, nag-explore ako Kaya lang dito ngayon, share ko natin siya. Ah, sige, go away. Just kung camera. Eto. Samsung oh, siya, kaya lang ngayon hindi ko na siya magamit kasi hindi ko na siya nagamit ngayon kasi nasira yes, yung charger niya and hindi ko makabili dito sa Pilipinas. Mm-mm. Yeah. Tapos, so, ngayon, yeah, yun. 
Nagsimula ko na yung 20 sa photography. So ngayon, ano nang gamit mo yung yeah, camera sila. ngayon, kuya? If nasira na yun dati. Bali ngayon, uh, Sir Hans. Ang ginagamit ko ngayon sir, kami, yung, Ni- yung Nikon ko. Nikon. <laughs> medyo, sorry, medyo delay ata ang ano ko dito. Bali, oh, ang, oh, ang camera ang ginagamit ko ngayon is yung, yung, yung Nikon D3500. Yun hmm. yung ginagamit ko talaga ngayon. And yan, yun nga, 2020, nagsimula ako sa photography. Till now. So, nag, nag, nag-start ako ng mag-event nitong 2020 na before, before, hmm. ano, before pandemic. Mga, siguro mga uh, December. Ade, mga, mga January, before pandemic, nag-start ang event. And, ano, yung photography ano talaga siya, big help. Big help siya mm-hmm. sa, ano, sa akin. Kasi, di pa Pilipinas, to be in fact, hindi sapat na meron ka lang ng isang trabaho. Kailangan meron ka. Lalo na dito sa probinsya kasi mas mababa yung okay. rate namin dito. Ako, kaya, laking tulong ta kapag meron kang ibang sideline. Lalo-lalo na kung yung side mo, is yung gusto mong win. Gawin. nag enjoy ka na. Ha? Kumikita ka. Kumikita ka pa. Tama. Nag-lag ata si Kaya Paolo. Sa'yo rin ba Kaya Bernard? Oo, oh, nag-lag Oo. Oh. Ayan. Parang bumabalik na siya. Kuya Paolo. Ayan. So yun, na-share ni Kuya Paolo yung Sorry, balag, journey ba, niya balag. sa pag-photography. Oo. Oh, oh. oh, pero okay lang. Okay lang. San ka na ulit nag... Ano, nagtapos kanina, kaya Paolo. Sa ba ko nagtapos? Medyo... <laughs> ano na nga? Um, yun na nga, ako, ayun na nga yun, yung, uh, yung malaking tulong yung photography sa akin dito sa probinsya. Uh, nakatulong na siya sa financial side. Mm-mm. Tama. And I can personally relate to that. Doon sa sinabi niya na maganda rin kapag, di ba, like tama yung sinabi niya na kapag sa province, eh, compared doon sa mga rates na binabayad doon sa mga, although sa Manila, mataas talaga yung expenses na kailangan mo. So parang ganun din na offset din pag nasa probinsya, di ba? Since maliit din yung kita. But tamang-tama siya doon sa sinabi niya na it's very nice that you're actually having a sideline out of something that you really love to do. And soon, I mean, I'm taking that from Kuya Paolo na whenever, um, kapag nakuha ko ng job, ganyan, I would very much be willing to have photography on my sideline para, di ba? I mean, syempre iba rin yung makukuha mong tawag dun. Bukod dun sa reward, dun sa intrinsic reward, dahil gusto mong ano, nakakatulong pa siya sa mga expenses mo. And That's very much respectable, lalo na sa mga nagdadalawang jobs ngayon, lalo na may pandemic. It's very admir- uh, admirable to know that you're doing that, Kuya Paolo. And I would like to ask naman about the challenges that you encountered as a photographer. Or meron ba or wala? And kung meron, ano yung mga yun? Uh, ang challenging sa pagiging photographer kapag, kapag uh, event photographer ka, kasi for me kasi uh, photographer we 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 somehow we are an introverted person mahihiyain tayo as a photographer and sa event yun yung challenging kasi kapag nag cover ka ng event or nag shoot ka ng event like wedding hindi mo kailangan uh, parang hindi maganda na tahimik na tao ka kapag syempre idedirect mo sila kung ano gagawin nila Uh, kailangan kailangan ipfeel ipafeel mo sa kanila na uh, comfort comfortable sila na hindi sila awkward and para makuha mo yung natural na emotion dun sa mga detrato nila and for me yun yung really challenging talaga for me as a photographer even now kasi yun yung challenge pa rin sa akin kasi somehow as a photographer we are 
introvert persons. Mm. And for some, meron naman tayong mga extroverted na, kasi di ba nga, photography is for everyone, we come from different backgrounds, different personalities, and totoo na, totoong challenge yun sa mga introvert photographers natin, yung to make them smile. Lalo na sinabi mo sa event photography, kapag sa kasal, I experienced that. Yes. Kasi meron talaga yung mga photographers minsan na, okay, capture lang ng capture kahit ano. But, and then, on the other side, meron naman itong mga photographers na sobrang lively. They could easily connect with yeah, um, um, with us mga subject. And like, alam mo yun, naturally funny yung iba na papatawanin ka talaga nila para mga kuha ng mga candid shots. And ayun, I think it's a valid challenge naman na no, para dun sa mga introverted. And in your case, paano mo naman, how are you dealing with this challenge na na-mention mo? Kung introverted ka and nagsa-sideline ka sa, is it something na na-conquer mo habang tumatagal na ano, or like sudden na kapag nandun ka na bigla ka na lang nawawala yung introverted Paolo and nagiging ano, lively Paolo na siya, ganun. Paano? Ngayon, ngayon kasi uh, Hans, uh, nag-struggle pa rin ako sa ganyan. Kaya yung ginagawa ko ngayon, uh, aside from nag-freelance ako sa mga kliyente, sometimes nakikipag-collab din ako sa ibang photographer or with my videographer na hinahire ko minsan. Doon ako mm-hmm. sa kanila natututo. Yun yung way ko para mas matuto ka pa. Maki-collab ka sa ibang photographer para, para alam mo yung ano ba yung gagawin mo Pa, a, ano ba yung uh, mga ways na ginagawa nila para patawanin nila yung ganitong ano yung ganitong uh, kliyente nila pa yeah. yun yung yung ginagawa ko ngayon pero as of now still struggling pa rin, pa rin ako sa ano sa ganong challenge pa rin tama and i i appreciate what you said kuya paolo na Tama nga, like magandang makipag-collab with other people. Bukod dun sa, it gives you an extra ounce of confidence kasi hindi ka mag-isa dun sa ginagawa mo. You also have something to learn from them. Like, new skill set, di ba? Yeah. Like, okay, may natututunan naman akong bago and mababawan ko to for the next event kung na pwede kong racket na yeah. sideline, di ba? I agree with that. Totoo. And to, speaking of collaboration, syempre hindi ka mag-isa dito. Dito rin si Bernard who would share his story about photography. Kung paano niya na-discover. I mean, same thing na ginawa ni Paolo Bernard. So ako, nung nag-start lang ako ng photography sa nung college ako, bale, ano lang, gamit lang ako ng mobile, picture-picture lang. Tapos, na-realize ko, sabi ko, what if, ano, seryoso yung game photography. So, Ayan, hanggang nag mm. na 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 picture picture na ako na hanggang almost one year na ako nag photography. So, ayan, gumawa ako ng page na ano lang last year lang 2020. So, ayun. Oh, nakita ayun. ko nga yung page mo kuya. DJ uh, po ba yung name ng ano? Yes, so, la- I mean, gaano nakatagal yung experience mo sa ano? Mga almost one year pa lang. One year. O, tingnan naman, naman yung page ni Kuya VJ. One year yan, ha? Ang dami na niyang nagawa. And speaking of that, syempre hindi may iwasan na meron ka ding challenges na na-encounter. Ano-ano yes. yung mga yun? And how did you deal with all those? Ayun yung kay, ano, kay Celestine. Yung sa, ano, ex, sa Isitan. Mm-hmm. Doon. Bale, ano kasi yun sa outs, outdoor kasi kami noon. So, Ang mga may marami hindrance, like ano, marami, may mga nagsisita na bawal mag-shoot yun sa lugar na yun. So, meron mga mm-hmm. guards na nagbabantay. Tapos, hassle din kasi yung sa model, pag nagtatanggal ng mask, so, hindi mm-hmm. namin kung may nagbabantay ba or wala. Kasi baka mahuli, merong uh, multa ganun. So, yun lang yung mga ano, mga struggle ko sa ano. sa outdoor mm. And specifically, yung mga minention ni Kuya Bernard ay yung challenges, specifically ngayong pandemic, kaya kagaya yung na-mention niya sa mga masks and outdoor shoots, di ba? And yun. But before that, nung, I mean, nagsimula ka lang ba nung nagka-pandemic or before pandemic ay nagpa-photography ka na rin? Before pandemic po, nag-photography na ako. Pero hindi naman serious. Parang 
pag matrip ko lang na mag-picture, saka lang ako nag-picture. Mm-hmm. Kaya siguro hindi ko naman na, wala akong experience na struggling na nag-uubos pa lang kasi nga, parang ano lang, trip-trip lang. Ah, uh, it's like for path, for hobby. Ay, na-mention mga kanina, mm-hmm. for hobby. Ngayon, tatanungin ko kayong dalawa kasi, syempre, yung mga viewers natin from Photo Nation, mga visual storytellers and aspiring photographers din, tulad ninyo. Ngayon, ano yung message nyo for them? Start tayo kay Paolo. I'm sorry, ano yung tanong? Hindi ko masyadong narinig. Ah, okay. Okay. Kuya Paolo, anong message mo para sa ating mga um, young visual storytellers and mga aspiring photographers? Sa mga aspiring photographer or sa mga, sa mga newbie photographer, photographer, just ano, just keep shooting and never stop learning. Uh, always remember that Photography is a subjective art. So, hindi mo kailangan ikumpara yung sarili mo. Merong mga uh, output ka na maganda sa'yo, hindi maganda sa iba. Yung Mm-mm. maganda sa iba, pero hindi maganda para sa'yo. I always remember that ano, photography is a subjective art. And... Mm. Kung ano yung maganda sa iyo, yun lang yung i-improve mo, yun lang yung panghawakan mo. 'Di ba? And then <clears throat> kapag ano, yun i-improve mo lang yung yung skill mo kung saan ka masaya, kung alin yung maganda para sa iyo. And and marirealize mo lang siya kung, kung for, for example, nagtanong ka, uh, kailan ba ako nag-improve? Well, mag improve ka lang kapag na-realize mo na yung mga before na litrato mo, na-realize mo na pangit pala talaga siya. At yun yung point na yun na, na ano yun, alam mo sa sarili mo na nag-improve ka You're na. Improving. Just mm-hmm. following your, your, your vision na ito yung maganda para sa akin. And from there, ano ka, mag improve ka talaga nang, nang masaya ka kasi kasi yung maganda para sa iyo yung sinusunod mo hindi yung para sa iba. Yun lang, uh, keep shooting and mag-practice lang ng mag-practice. Keep shooting. Eh ang ganda ng sinabi ni Kuya Paolo and I'd like to point out yung sinabi niya na yung like ma-discover mo lang na you're improving kapag binabalikan mo yung mga works mo sa past and realize mo ah, ito yung mga mali ko dati and I actually have better photos now. And that's why I think and I regard photography as something like self-discovery. Like, the more we do it, the more we discover about ourselves and um, the things that we like. Kasi, given that it's subjective, kaya nga na minention ni Kuya Paolo, iba-iba rin tayo ng tastes when it comes to photography. And as we do shooting that often as we practice photography more and more, that's when we discover what we truly want, what we truly um, like as our works of art. And since it's subjective, it calls for respect then. And like when you were doing it, you are actually expressing yourself. And that's the point of photography. Kaya nga nasabi nila, photography is for everyone. And everyone is subjective in expressing themselves. And I think that's really great to take from what Kuya Paolo said. How about you, Kuya Bernard? Oh, mukhang nasabi na lahat ni Kuya Paolo. <laughs> nasabi mm. na lahat ni Kuya Paolo. So, ano lang, bali siguro, keep on motivating yourself na lang sa passion na ginagawa mo para hindi mawala yung pagkagusto mo rin sa ginagawa mo. Yun, yun lang. Keep on motivating yourself, sabi ni Kuya Bernard. At sabi naman ni Kuya Paolo, keep on shooting. I think pwede natin relate in with each other kasi paano ka ba motivate? You must keep on shooting so you would get, so you would keep yourself motivated along the way. If we continue to shoot, we'll continue to get motivated to be able to do our passion which is photography. Oh, sabi ni Ma'am Liza, great message Paolo, Kuya Bernard then as well. Nice, nice, Bernard Joseph Mayer, seven a Facebook user. Oh, shout out daw, galing from Jonathan Galera, Kuya Bernard. <laughs> shout out. 
Okay, at this point naman, I'd like you to promote your pages or kung saan nila matatagpuan yung mga photos ninyo, um, where they could reach you and kung may gusto man kang i-promote na iba pa or i-shout out dyan. Ayan, Kuya Paolo. Konti lang sa akin. Uh, sa, you can follow me on my Instagram account paul, uh, at paolo.monasterio and sa Facebook naman, you can search Paolo Monasterio. May, may page naman ako Pix Perfecto ang pangalan niya. Doon ako nagpo-post ng mga event sa shoot namin. Yung sa Instagram naman, yung sa Instagram naman is, yung personal, ano ko lang yan, uh, photography mm. uh, portfolio. Yun lang pa. Ayan. Baka pwede naman natin ipa-flash sa screen yung page ni Kuya Paolo. At the sense. Ayan. So, Pix Perfecto. Diyan, ilike nyo raw yung page ni Kuya Paolo where you can find his photos. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you, Kuya Paolo. Ikaw naman, Kuya Bernard. Ako yung Facebook page ko lang na BJ Mer, tapos Instagram account, BJ Mer underscore. Yun lang po. Ayan. Flash on our screens. Ayan, thank you so much, Kuya Bernard and Kuya Paolo for... Um, sparing your time for the spotlight um, segment of Breaking Boundaries. It was a truly meaningful discussion that I had with you and thank you sa lahat ng inputs and insights na nabigyan nyo. But then for now, hindi muna kayo aalis dahil papasok naman si Eldridge and our other guests from our previous segment for the Memes Reaction segment. And after that, we will be back para <coughs> the end ng um, episode natin for tonight. Yan. Go kay Eldridge. Yes, hello. So, ito na ang um, 90 segment natin ngayon, no? Pero bago lahat, bago lahat, no? Ma, I, I just want to ask question kay Kuya Paolo. Kasi super curious ako doon sa ano. Kasi I'm also a free, freelance editor, no? Kuya Paolo, question lang. How do you rate your service? Like per shots or per project siya? Uh, per project siya. Bale, ano na siya, package na siya per, per event. Oh, okay. So, bale, parang uh, isahan na lang talaga siya. Isang diretsyo na isang presyo. Tapos, ano na, puro uh, shots na siya. Oo, uh, sa na-package sa, sa, for example, sa wedding, may iba-iba yung uh, list of packages na uh, 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 pinapakita sa clients uh, doon pipili sila for example for example sa for example uh, wedding la ang ang package and and photo lang for example uh, mag magpe-pressure ako ng uh, for example 6000 and kumpleto na siya lahat uh, unleash shoot na siya and all enhanced photo parang ganun Okay, Paolo. Paolo, that's nice. Paolo, <laughs> pa-preset ka naman. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> joke lang. <laughs> so, email mo na lang, sir. <laughs> yes, email, email na lang. So, yan, thank you for that, Kuya Paolo. No? Uh, it's, a, it's a great help for me po sa aking journey sa freelance. So, yun na nga. Let's start with our 90s uh, edition, no? Ngayong part ng... Um, <laughs> episode natin. Ah, at nandito si Sir Franz. Ah, at nandito si Sir Franz. Ay, Nako. kikulo lang ako. Hindi naman ako, Jensi. <laughs> Ayan na. So, play na po natin. Uh, direct. Ayan na. So, magre-react lang kayo sa mga 90s stuff na makikita natin si screen. So, do you know this one, guys? Ano ano to? Ano to? Hindi ko alam. Sa mga naka- Game Boy ba yan? Mga <laughs> Liit na Game Boy, ha? Wala pang bala. Sa mga nakakaalala. Nakasulat na nga, oh. Nakasulat na, oh. As in Game Boy siya? <laughs> ah, Game Boy lang, laki, oh. Ah, laki, oh. Ano lang, ano lang. Yung laruan na may tubig sa loob. Ah, okay. Ito, may music, may music. May music, guys. May music, guys. Kali na yung music. Ah, ano, okay. yung may tubig lang siya sa loob. So, na, 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 nalaro nyo na ba ito, ano, sa ating mga guests? Nalaro nyo na ba itong, uh, ano na? Ah, hindi. Ano mo muna sila kung ano yun? <laughs> ano, ano daw yun? Kahit na lang, ano, ano, ano yung tingin ano yun? Ano yun? Isa yung virtual pet? 
Ah, virtual ah, pet. Ikaw, ikaw. Yeah. Kuya, Kuya Paolo, ano, ano sa tingin mo kung ano yun? <laughs> <laughs> sabi, sabi ni Direk Axe Infinity. So, ano, uh, tingin mo, <laughs> tingin mo, Direk? <laughs> Genshin oh, ano, hindi ko yun. hindi ko alam eksakto kung ano yun pero Nako. alam ko mas pangit yun sa brick game. Mukha mo. Patay ka yun. Yan na si Madam Lisa. Nako. Ay! Ayan sinagot na. ni Sir Bean. Tamagotchi daw. Tamagotchi. Ano so, yeah. So, 2,000 po ako pinanganak. So, definitely hindi ko po siya alam. Pero yung Game Boy, ano po po siya. So, yeah. Next tayo, next tayo, 90s stuff. Next tayo, oh, direct. Gusto ko yung Axie ni Direk dun. Oh. Ay, alam ko yeah. to. <laughs> ah, ano to, guys? Ano to? Ano to? Nostalgic yan. <laughs> Sampung piso pa ata yan. Just the Just yan. Ay, Ikaw, Kuya Jason. Oh, oh, oh. Ikaw kuya Bernard. Binebenta ng Frozen, Frozen yan. <laughs> oh. mm. Ikaw kuya Bernard. Hindi. Ah, hindi mo pa siya nakita. Ikaw Sir Franz, definitely. Ay. Nakita mo na yan. <laughs> bago na nga yan eh. Dyan. O nga, mukhang Ine, bago yung packaging. Ice candy lang yan dati eh. Uh-huh. Alam mo yung... may version pa yan yung hati. Hati yung oh. ibang kulang. Yung lola ko, uh-huh. gumagawa kami yan eh. <laughs> wow. So, nakakalibre ka pa, sir. Oo, oh, nip- yung ice candy, yung manga, di ba? Yung uh, ano mm-hmm. mo lang siya. Ipipuray mo yung manga at sa lagay mo, gagawin mong ice candy. Uh, tapos, ipipuray. O kaya ka, Milo. <laughs> Ay, oo, oh, masarap yun. Grabe. Pero masakit sa chan kapag dumami. So, yeah. <laughs> next tayo, next picture tayo sa ating 90s stuff. Yeah, two and one. Ay! Yeah. <laughs> Sama, alam niyo po ba kung ano to? Plastic balloon. Plastic balloon. Plastic balloon. Plastic balloon. May ganyan pa ba ngayon? Nagahanap ako. Nagahanap ako ng ganyan. Nagahanap. Lasang, lasang rugby yan, sir. Lasang rugby. Hindi siya na po, hindi siya na po po to. Oh, golden daw. Lasang rugby. Oo. Isa niyo mga bata yan, may... May purple na dito, kinabukasan. <laughs> <laughs> Napakahirap iihipan. So yan, yeah, next time. Ah, next yeah. picture. Yes. Direct next picture. Ayun na. Yan yung, yan yung after mong pabutugin or after mong pa... Yan yung after mong matapos, kakainin mo siya parang bubble gum. <laughs> Masarap. Hoy, hindi siya kinakain. Malala ka na lang wala mawala yung air na ano pinasok. So ayan na, ayan na yung next picture. Dai. Ay. Olympic ring. Olympic ring. Olympic ring. Yan yung yan yung may tubig sa loob. Si Rick nakalagay. Si Direk na mo, si Direk nakalagay niya yung pangalan eh. Nakasulat mo. <laughs> nakalagay niya yung pangalan eh. Loko niya naman. Okay. Naka-freebie pa yan sa McDonald's. So next time picture. Ay! Ah, yeah. So, may hey, mag-side ka rin po bang ganyan yung cellphone? Parang hanggang Mabot ngayon yata yan. ganyan eh. <laughs> Totoo ba na kapag binags- binagsak daw yan, hindi talaga siya ano? Oo, oh, mabigat yan. Mabigat? Solid, solid, mabigat, solid. solid. Kahit iba to, iba to, no? Kahit, hindi, hindi talaga nababasag. Pwede mo yung iba to sa kalaman, no? Oo. Kalaman. Halip, oh. grabe. Buhay pa yan. <laughs> Nokia yan yung... 3310 ata, yan. Gusto ko mong laro dyan yung snake. Space Impact. Ah, space, <laughs> space Impact. Space Impact. Snake, snake. Space Impact. Abo. So, yan. Next picture. Na. Ay! <laughs> Bar- <laughs> Barnet. Barnet. Yan ang yan ang gawain pagkatapos mo kumain ng chocolate. <laughs> Ay, hindi hindi pala chocolate. Hindi kasi hindi pala chocolate yung ano, yung uh, Nestle Crunch dati. Isa <laughs> kami ginagawang bracelet. Ba ano braces? Oh. So next next picture tayo. So, next picture tayo. Ayun na. We weirdo namin noon, no. no? 
One. Ay, ito. Oh, laser. Marami, laser. Maraming batang, laser. Maraming batang nagkar- naging astigmatistic. Ay, eh, nagkaroon ng astigmatism nung <laughs> nauso yan. <laughs> Binibenta siya, like, Pina- public. Pin- pinapahabol siya sa, ano, sa butike. Pahabol oh. niya ng butike. <laughs> Dami. Maraming i-mark yung picture namin dito noon. Ganito. May iba't ibang ano pa yan. May iba't ibang design. <laughs> Hindi ko ata naabutan to. Ano to? Binibenta talaga siya as in sa public? Na oh, ano oh, naman? Oh, oh, astiga. Hindi po ang luwag. Kasi diba bawal siyang itutok sa sky? If I'm not mistaken. Kasi pwede. Kapag, ano, pwede ah, naman. Pwede. Mahina, mahi, mahina naman siya. Hindi naman siya. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Ah, ah, parang laser siya. Parang laser siya. <laughs> Sana may nabibili pang ganyan. Papaluin ka ng walis ng nanay mo pag tinapat mo sa mukha niya. Ang <laughs> <laughs> sakit na. Next time, next time picture. Ayan na. 3, 2, 1. Ay! Ay. Nabutan Ay. mo. Ano ba yun? Ay. Diyan na naman yung pangalan. Ano ba yun? <laughs> Diyan yung pangalan. Yung Dito ano, ko niyo naman kami. <laughs> <laughs> Puro Tetris lang ang nalalaro dyan, diba? Tama ba ako? Oo. Oh. Tet- Tetris Ay, yung tawag ngayon. Tetris tayo. Ay! Eldris, magulat ka pag makapaglaro ka ng Mario Kart dyan. <laughs> <laughs> Grabe, oh, meron. Meron yan si Chris, eh. Mm. Oh. Next, uh, next picture tayo. Tetris. Tetris lang. Ay! Ay! Alin tawag dyan? Just Ay! Bakit nga next? Ano? Ah, wala. No, wala. <laughs> Ay na daw ng direct. Ay na daw ng Jackson. Ah, oh, iba-iba siyang kulay. Sinabi mo na. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Na-mistra ko doon sa Jackson. Wala na kasi yung nagbibenta ngayon dito mo. Wala na nga. Ano? Oh. So, Nakapaglaro ba kayo ng ano? Chi- yung ano ba yun? Chinese chop. Chinese garter. Ay, Chinese garter. Chinese, Chinese garter. Pick up sticks. Ah, pick up sticks. Ah. Uh, okay. Wala. Wala siya. So, next tayo direct. Next tayo. Ay? Ah, ayun lang. Ayun lang ang um, ayun lang para lang. sa 90s natin today. So, ayun na. Nagbabalik na si Kuya Hans uh, para sa ating ano, <coughs> ending. Ayun naman. Actually, napanood ko yung reaction nyo and nakarelate ako dun sa iba. Actually, add ko lang yung sa laser. Di ba yung laser yun yung may tawag dun yung may iba't ibang figures kapag inopen mo? Uh, yung uh. ilaw. <laughs> Tapos ano ako dun dun sinabi ni Eldridge na bawal daw siyang itutok sa sky. <laughs> <laughs> Pero isa yun sa mga pinaka na-enjoy ko nun. And of course, yung mga brick game and all others. Mm-hmm. But, <clears throat> ayun, actually that concludes all of our segments for tonight's episode. Again, I'd like to thank all of our guests tonight. Kuya Jason, Kuya Jet, Kuya Bernard, and Kuya Paolo for a very meaningful night na tinaluhan nyo nga talaga. At sana lahat ng mga audiences natin ay may natutuhan din sa inyo. At the same time, thank you rin Sir Franz for... <clears throat> Um, gracing your, us with your presence at nakatulong sa ating discussion and of course to Eldridge for co-hosting me tonight in this episode and once again I'm Hansel Bert in Karinugan and I'm Eldridge James Belmonte and we are your hosts for Breaking Boundaries yes. join us again the week after next week for another episode of Breaking, Breaking Boundaries. Boundaries see you next week guys I, next next week <laughs> good night and thank you good night bye bye Night, bye bye.